It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you and welcome to the Science Bowl. So nice to have you here today. Our game has been going on for 34 years here in Prince George's schools. We test scientific IQs and literacy and we hope you test your own and play along today with our six outstanding young players. Let's meet them right now. First from Robert Goddard School, would you please say hello to Mason Vosmick, Ellen Childress, and Nathaniel Parker Fang. And from Thomas Poulin, would you please welcome to the program Albert Vasquez, Noel Gonzalez Jackson, and Clayton Felder. And now here are the categories of questions we use on the Science Bowl. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body systems. We'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing, and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. And here on the Science Bowl, we arrange our game board according to question difficulty. Easier questions on the left, worth five and 10 points. The tougher ones worth 15, 20, and ultimately 25, the toughest of them all. Both of our teams start out at 50 points apiece. No penalties ever for incorrect answers. Into the two rounds, one of these two good-looking teams will come back to play Akakik for the chance to become the fourth and last of our final four in this year's middle school competition. So a lot at stake here. Let's go over and make sure everything works properly. Let's go to that red team. And Ella, would you try that buzzer? Looks and sounds good. Good luck to you and to Nathaniel and to Mason. And Noel, how about the green teams? They look ready and raring to go over there, too. Everything looks fine. Good luck to you and to Clayton and to Albert. Congratulations, guys, for being selected to represent your schools. I know we're going to have a great game here today. We go alphabetically R before T. So, Robert Goddard and Ella, let's play this bowl. Brave for f Oh, sorry. You should no. say it. Come Zoo on. prayed sorry. for five. Zoo prayed for five points. All right, teams. What same word means a male stingless bee and a pilotless plane. Thomas Pullen. Autopilot. No, no, remember the category, zoo parade. What same word describes a male stingless bee and a pilotless plane? Um, a past a Nathan. Drone. A drone, that's exactly right, good. Go red. What's your... Um, zoo parade for 10. <laughs> zoo parade for 10 points. Teams, even if they're not sleepy or bored, even fish underwater, do this! Thomas Pullen. Take naps no, or yawn? No, no, they don't take naps. Robert Goddard, what do they do? Even though they're not sleepy or bored, oh. even fish do this underwater. Okay, okay. Yep. Yeah. Yawn. They yawn. Yes, they do. Good. All right, go again, Red. Mm -hmm. Zoo parade for 15. 15 points in the zoo parade. Teams in the Disney film, The Little Mermaid, the sea witch Ursula had six tentacles, which meant she was kind of like, go ahead. A squid? Yes, you're going to kick yourself. Yes, she was kind of half squid because she had six tentacles, Ursula did. But if you counted her two arms, she then had eight appendages, so she would be kind of half squid and half what? Octopus. Octopus, that's right, Mason. Yeah, sorry about it. You'll get them next time, Noel. Go, Ella. Zoo prayed for 20. Zoo prayed for 20 points. Teams, when animals like ourselves vomit, all the contents of the stomach come up along with water and some of the chemicals in the stomach. But... When animals like wolves go and eat food and then bring it back for the pups, all that food is stored, Noel. In their fat. What do you want to tell me? May I pass to Clayton? You may. Clayton, what do you want to tell me? In the fat? No, no, the <coughs> food that these animals like wolves are bringing back to their pups in the den is not down in the stomach, it is in the esophagus. So instead of vomiting, they do this to get that food back up. Regurgitating? Regurgitate, that's exactly right. Thank you, Mason. Go. 
Control. Zoo Parade for 25. Zoo Parade for 25 will finish out that category, and I want you to look at the monitor in the studio for this visual question. Team says, beautiful barn owl has a unique face. Like the satellite dishes on our roof to pick up signals, that face is designed to pick up every little sound in the forest. You even see these dishes on the sidelines of NFL football games. I will give you the 25 points if you can tell me the P initialed shape of that face in those dishes. P initialed. It's known as a parabolic mirror or a parabolic dish. Go again, red. I was about to say funnel. Uh oh. Science potpourri for five. Mm -hmm. Potpourri for five points. You know, there is a chronic wasting disease among deer. It affects their nervous system. They stagger about, they drool, they look like the living dead. So they call this disease what, Nicole? No, Noel. <laughs> The zombie disease? They call it the zombie disease. Exactly right. Good. Go green. Um, let's get physical for 10. Physical for 10 points. All right, teams. Three-part answer. There are three chemical elements, numbers 92, 93, and 94, that are the same order as the planets in the outer portion of the solar system in that order. Can you give me those three planets or those three elements in order? Saturn and Neptune. Saturn, Neptune, Uranus. Not quite, not quite. Remember, they're chemical elements now. These three <laughs> chemical elements, 92, 93, and 94, are on the periodic table in the same order in which they appear in the heavens in our outer solar system. And instead of just anybody answering, just kind of tell me who's going to answer there. Ella? Uh, Mason will answer. Okay, Mason. Saturnium, uranium. Go ahead. It's Saturnium, uranium. Saturnium. Saturnium, uranium, and neptunium? Boy, there is no Saturnium. There is a uranium, there is a neptunium, and there is a plutonium. Oh, so close, both teams. I liked your tries. Go green. Um, we'll have green things for 15. Green things for 15 points. Teams, there are trees in this city called ginkgo trees. They have little fan-shaped leaves. And unique among trees, every year in the fall, they defoliate en masse. Meaning, what happens with those trees? Robert Goddard. They lose their leaves in large groups. They, I think they lose all their leaves at once. Like That's exactly fall. right. Yes, they all, they all lose their leaves, and they all do it at the same time. Exactly right. Good. Go red. Right. Uh, science potpourri for 10. Okay. Potpourri for 10 points. Teams, there is a new di diet out called the keto diet, which is low in carbohydrate, but high in this, which Thomas sugar. Pullen. Sugar? Sugar? Not sugar. No, Robert Goddard. It's the fat. keto diet. Fat. Let fat. me finish. Sorry. The keto diet is low in carbohydrates but high in this, which can lead you to develop heart disease because fat, of the yeah. cholesterol. Fat. 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 That's right. It is high in fat. Okay. The buzzer says we've come to the end of a very quick round. We've got some good players here today. Our score is 125, Robert Goddard, 55, Thomas Pullen. We've got an exciting second half. Don't go away. And welcome back. Nice to have you here on the Science Bowl today with our middle school players here. And some of them have been here before and when they were in elementary school. So if they look experienced, that's because they are. Let's go meet the team from Robert Goddard. And Ella, tell us about your school. Who's your principal? Oh, um, our principal is Miss Womack, and our vice principal is Miss Compton, who is here today. Wonderful. Us She'll be out in a few moments. That's terrific. Uh, tell me who your coach is. Um, our coach is Ms. Powell, and we also have Ms. Dupre helping us. Absolutely. So you've got a couple coaches, a couple administrators. So this is a big deal over there at Robert Goddard. Tell me something about your school that you are really proud about. You like to brag. Uh, we're a really small school, so with the teachers can really get to know you and help you when you need help. Isn't that important? Yeah, because everybody moves at a different pace, and you know, and nobody wants to be left behind. So teachers that are conscious of that, and you have good teachers over there. I know they do that. Tell me about yourself. What do you do in your spare time, Ella? Um, I like to read. I like to watch TV. Um, I do sports, soccer, softball, cheerleading, and I also play the cello. Yeah, so you're a musician, you're an athlete, and you're a scholar. You do everything. You're, 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 you're a very busy young lady, and you're a good captain, too. Nathaniel, nice to have you back again. Tell Thank us your you. science bowl history. When have you been here before? I was here as an alternate in fourth grade and in fifth grade as a member of the team. Unfortunately, we lost that one, but... We're here to make up for that. In yeah, grade. that's right. You know, and that's life. You don't win them all, but yeah. you know, you keep trying, and uh, keep trying. you always give it your best shot, and you do. Tell me about yourself. What do you want to do someday? 
uh, I want to become a engineer for NASA. I want to design spaceships. Wow. I've always been into like drawing spaceships and things, and it would be fun to actually design one. Exactly. For, You're for a good mathematician too, I imagine. I'm pretty good at math, yeah. yeah. I, uh, yeah. I, I don't doubt that one bit. Mason, nice to have you back. Tell me when you've been on the show before. Uh, same as Nathan, except so alternate fourth, and in the fifth I was the team captain. Yeah, um, I remember you were right there. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you like about the show. Uh, well, I like that it has Zoo Parade because I and green things because I really like biology as a science field. So yeah, so animals it's and nice plants. It's nice to have an expertise yeah. on the board. And you just demonstrated that because Ella very conveniently went right down the zoo parade category there. Oh, yes. What do you want to do That's someday, Mason? Coincidence. Mason, what would you like to do someday? Um, well, <coughs> a lot of things. I could be an artist, paleontologist who studies extinct animals, yeah. a zoologist who studies living animals. Yeah. You're interested in evolution too, right? Yeah, evolution, speculative evolution. Biology. Yeah, speculative evolution is basically like, it's it's a lot of things, but it's like, what could happen in another situation, whether it be like the future of Earth, or if something different happened in Earth's history or another planet entirely. Exactly, because our history is not guaranteed. Things will change, and we will have to change along with it, as will all the creatures here. Playing a good game, all of you guys. Let's go to Thomas Pullen and Noel. Tell us about your team. Who is your principal? Our principal is Miss Lucas Adams. Absolutely. She's been there for some time. I know she's yes. very supportive of yes. you guys. And your coach is? <coughs> Mr. Mr. Manning. The one and only Mr. Manning. Yes. Roy, thank you for so many years of sending some wonderful students over here. And they all paid tribute to you in their bios, too. You are, you are something else. You are the wise man at uh, Pullen, according to all of them. What do you like about the school, Noel? What do you like? Um, I love that we're a creative and performing arts school. So mm -hmm. you get to choose majors between dance and drama and theater, really whatever you want to. It's yeah. really fun. And you have a great presence. Uh, you'd like to be an actress someday? Yes. yes. Yeah, yes. I can see that. And you've got a lot of things you'd like to try in one lifetime. She's going to try to squeeze a lot in. Give yes. us a sampling. Um, I love to do engineering. I love coding. Um, I also play the flute, yeah. so that's fun. Yeah. Photography, different things. Oh, yeah, you're keeping, and as we were saying before, do them all. Do them yes. all. Find the ones that you like the best. and. Uh, uh, one of them will be that profession that will just Thank be you. a perfect fit. Nice to have you here today. Uh, any alternates on your team, Noel? Yes, we have Rannon Rodriguez, Monte Willi Wilkins, and John Otike. That's wonderful. And I don't think I asked Robert Goddard if they had any alternates. If we could just go back to Robert Goddard for a second. My apologies, Ella. Who's behind the scenes there? Um, we have two alternates, Braden Copperleak and Grayson Huff. Wonderful. And we'll bring them out in just a few moments' time. All right, we'll go back over to Poulin and Clayton. You've been here before, too. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think you might have been in that very seat. Yes, no? Yeah. Yeah. So what do you like about the show? Um, I think it's kind of fun because... <laughs> uh, Hard to put well, into words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you told me that, are you a chef? You no, cook? that wasn't me. That wasn't you. But do you cook? Um, sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. Jokes. I know you like to watch TV. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And what's your favorite show, Clayton? I don't have one. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, oh, science bowl. <laughs> science bowl. That's right. <laughs> that's why I like that young man. Yeah. <laughs> he takes his cues well. <laughs> Albert, nice to have you here today. What do you do in your spare time? Uh, I like to um, uh, watch TV, uh, spe uh, specifically Dragon Ball, and I like to draw. But I'm not very good at drawing. But I still put an effort into it. Yeah. yeah, you get better as you try things, and uh, obviously you have a natural talent for it, so Dragon Ball, you like to watch that, huh? Yeah. yeah. You watch Science Bowl once in a while, too? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Hint, hint. It's fun. All right, let's get back to the game. Pulling 55, Robert Goddard 125, lots of points to give away, and Ella, go for it. Science Potpourri for 15. Potpourri for 15 points. All right, teams, uh, if you are as excited about the Nats winning the World Series as I am, you will know that the manager, Davey Martinez, said during the playoffs, gee, I don't know what I'd need more, a reliever or a defibrillator. The reliever, of course, was a pitcher in the bullpen. Why was he mentioning a defibrillator? Thomas Pullen. His heart. His heart was beating really quickly. He may have a heart attack. Absolutely. He had heart issues indeed. Yeah, thank you, Clayton. Good answer. Go green. Um, Dateline Science for 15. Dateline Science for 15 points. A new book called No One is Too Small to Make a Difference was written by Greta Thunberg, that Swedish girl who is traveling the world telling all of us that we need to reduce what footprint? Our carbon. Sorry. Our carbon footprint. Absolutely right, Noel. Go. Green. Body Systems for 15. Body Systems 15 points. Teams on the television show 
Modern Family, the actress Sarah Hyland uh, got one of these paired organs from her father, Kidney. Thomas Pullen. Kidney. Kidney, yes. And when it failed, her brother stepped up and gave her one of his kidneys. So really uh, a test of family loyalty there. And she apparently is doing well right now. 100 to 125 advantage green. Go. Dateline signs for 10. Dateline for 10 points. Teams, uh, a scientist once said, it's not that I'm so smart, it's just that I stay with problems longer. He was the man who had a problem with general relativity and seemed to solve it, Thomas Pullen. Albert Einstein? Albert Einstein oh. is right. Yes, indeed. Good. Clayton goes, whew. One, one sure about that one. Yes, sir. What's that? We will test your buzzer. Sure, go ahead. Okay, we'll turn it off. Try it again. Yep. All right. Try the green one. Okay. Okay, try red. Okay, we're fine. Whoever jumps in fast, the other one is cut off. Okay, go green. Let's get physical for 15. Physical for 15 points is a visual question. Look at the monitor in the studio, please. Teams, you will see a lemon here, which in this case is a wet cell battery. And you can see a voltmeter there. What you're witnessing is the conversion of what kind of energy to what kind of energy? Robert Goddard. We've got some engineers over there. Thomas Pullen, have an answer for me in case I need to come to you. All right, what to what, Mason? Potential energy to electrical energy. Mm. Give me more information. Uh, what kind of potential energy? Uh, stored energy? Mm, not, no, not quite. No, Thomas Pullen, we're seeing the conversion of what kind of energy to what kind of energy with that lemon as a wet cell battery and then that voltmeter registering. Chemical energy to electrical energy? That's what I wanted. I wanted the chemical part of it. Good. Go green. Um, may we please have green things for 10? Green things for 10 points. Score update. Robert Goddard, 125. Thomas Pullen, 125. This is green things for 10 points. Teams, this green fuzzy plant that grows on the north side of trees is... Yes, Thomas Pullen. Moss. Moss, that's right. Yeah, a bryophyte. It has no roots. It has no stems. It has no flowers and no seeds. Go green. Body systems for 20. Body systems for 20 points. Two-part answer. If you take a dry soda cracker and you put it in your mouth, your salivary amylase enzyme will, if you keep chewing it, change that the sugars in there from one form to another. What carbohydrate changes to what carbohydrate as you continue to chew that cracker? What becomes what? Starch becomes sugar. Starch becomes sugar. Go green. Body systems for 10. Body systems for 10 points. You know, if something has already happened, you know it perfectly because it happened. They often say that hindsight is this perfect. Yes, Robert Goddard. 2020. 2020, that's right. It is 2020. It is that perfect vision uh, uh, scale. Go. Which one? What do you think? Ella. Uh, Science potpourri for 20. Potpourri for 20 points. Teams, the velociraptor that figured w much in the Jurassic Park movies, its name, Velociraptor, tells you what two things about that dinosaur. Oh, yes. What two things, Robert Goddard, who's going to be answering here? Maybe. Okay, Mason. It's either a speedy hunter or a speedy thief. Say it again. Speedy hunter or speedy thief. Yes, we will take that, a speedy hunter or predator. Indeed, veloso meaning, uh, meaning uh, fast, out of velocity. Good, red, go. That's That's the We're back to tide at one, no, we have one, okay. We're at, We're at 155 to 135. Okay, go. Science potpourri for 25. Potpourri for 25 points. Big one in that category, teams. We have retired the space shuttles. They are now in museums. The new generation of space shuttles that maybe Nathaniel will design someday uh, are named for this constellation that we know as the Hunter. Robert Goddard. Orion. Orion is correct. Yes, indeed. Good. Go red. Oh, thank God I read about that. Um, Dateline signs for five. Dateline for five points, teams. Because of the recent earthquake in Nepal, people in that country are asking scientists to remeasure the height of this mountain. Yes? Noel. Uh, uh, Answer, please. Mount Everest? Mount Everest, yes. 29,029 feet. They think it might have sunk some. Go green. Dateline signs for 20. Dateline signs for 20 points. K-pop, Korean pop. They recently won an award for a song that has three letters that also identifies the molecule that makes each of us unique. Noel. 
DNA. DNA is right. Okay. Yes, indeed. Good. Green, go. Let's get physical for 20. Let's get physical for 20 points. Teams, up uh, on Pluto, they have found dunes that are made of frozen methane. Hmm. So if you take a gas and you freeze it, is that known, this is multiple choice, is it known as transposition, deliquescence, or sublimation? Which of those three, Goddard? Sublimation. Sublimation is right, Ella. Good, go. Mm, green things for 20. Green things, 20 points. Teams, uh, the king of the conifers is a tree known as the sugar pine. John Muir, the great naturalist, said when he tasted this that is produced by the sugar pine, it tastes sweeter than the sap. Yes, Robert Goddard. Oh. Of a lake. Oh, sap? No, not sap. Thomas Poulin, the sap of the sugar maple tree was less sweet to John Muir than this substance produced by the sugar pine, a conifer. Pine cone? Not pine. Resin. Resin is the, what comes out of a pine tree. Go again, red. Uh, okay. Do you have a 40, 40 point advantage? Selfish. Ella, you choose. 40 point advantage. Uh, green things for five. Yeah. Green things for five points. Teams, in the Chinese language, panda means the eater of these. Bamboo. Thomas Pullen. Tree. Tree. Bamboo. Bamboo is right. Yes, good. Go green. Thank God. Green things for 25. Green things 25. Big one in that category, teams, is as follows. Uh, cows, like all ruminants, chew a cud. They bring the food back up again and again and again because they're trying to break down this complex carbohydrate that is used to make up cell walls. Robert Goddard. Cellulose. Cellulose is right, Mason. Good. Go, red. Humus Powell. Body systems for five. Body systems for five points. Teams, if your doctor is testing your patellar reflex, he is taking a little hammer and tapping your what? Thomas Pullen. Knee. Your knee. Yes, ma'am. Go. Body systems for 25. Body systems for 25 points. Teams, the longest nonstop flight on Earth is about to start. It will go from New York to Sydney, 19 hours without stopping. That is going to confuse the pilots and the stewards and the passengers because they'll not know when to eat or sleep or go to the bathroom. It will disrupt their circadian rhythms. Spell circadian for 25 points. Spell circadian. Who will be my speller? Clayton. Clayton, say the word for me nice and loud. Circadian. One more time. Oh, circadian. All right. Okay. C I R C A D I A N. That's it. Yes, soft voice, but he got it. C I R C A D I A N. All right, go green. Let's get physical for 25. Physical for 25 points. Teams, it was. Isaac Newton, who first noticed that light passing through a prism will become all the colors of the rainbow. Name all those colors in order for me. Oh, okay. Robert Goddard. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. You got them. You got them. That's red. Go again. Um, Dateline for 25. Dateline for 25 points. Teams, your question is as follows. NASA's new moon mission is named Artemis, which is very clever, because in Greek mythology, Artemis was the twin sister of Apollo. Of Apollo. Exactly right, yes. Last question of the game, five-pointer in Let's Get Physical is as follows. Uh, when David was going to kill Goliath with his slingshot, when he pulled back that stone, that's the third law of motion, action and reaction. Also, it was converting potential energy to kinetic, kinetic energy. energy is right. And with that, we come to the end of a wonderful game. We'll be back with a wrap up in just one moment. Don't go away. Give yourselves a hand. Welcome back. What a game this was. Not only are these young people great scientists, they are great sportsmen too. They have had such a good time. They've been congratulating each other. Our final tally today is Thomas Pullen 200, Robert Goddard 275. A round of applause for Robert Goddard. Mason, Ella, Nathaniel, Miss Powell is back there, Mr. Prey, and Miss Compton. Compton, yes, the assistant principal is here today. And Braden and Grayson in matching blue shirts. You guys are an integral part of this team, too. And let's hear it for Thomas Pullen. Albert and Noel and Clayton, you guys are great. Look at the shadow team back there. Monte and Rhiannon and John. And there he is. Yes, my friend, Mr. Manning. How many years have you been at Thomas Pullen? 
He doesn't want to say. <laughs> he has been there a lot. He is an institution. We are so proud of you guys, and we thank you for watching. Yes, we will have our next game. It's going to be Robert Goddard against Akaki. Don't miss it. See you then. Bye-bye.